the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. With your spirit. Dear sisters and brothers, happy Easter. On this day, we celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death. We too now are invited to die to sin so that we might rise with Christ to new life. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection and may through the renewal brought about by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark. She saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple that Jesus loved and told them, they have taken him from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial clothes, 
but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial clothes there and the cloth that covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Accept this Easter candle, may it always dispel the darkness of this night. My sisters and brothers, these words of the Easter proclamation, or exalted, sung last night at the Easter vigil, I believe have new purpose in our world this Easter 2020. Whether on the trading floor of our world stock markets or in the earthquake destroyed Cathedral of Zagreb in Croatia or in the quarantined homes and locales of our world community, events have occurred which have either literally or figuratively made us feel like the biblical people who walked in darkness. Like our ancestors in faith, the human family finds itself grappling with events that are both tragic as well as beyond our immediate control in many respects. Into this fray and darkness, on this holy day arises a new flame, one whose radiance last night transformed our cathedral church from pitch blackness into a column of fire casting out the darkness. For a few moments this morning, I would like you and I to focus our attention on this new light, to see how it might assist us in combating the darkness that seeks to envelop the present moment of human history. Let there be light, and there was light. As one learns from the opening chapter and verses of the book of Genesis. Light is the first thing God created. But the sun and moon were not created until day four in the creation account. What then was this light that God on the first day separated from darkness? One scripture scholar suggests that this first light is none other than that which emanates from the glory of God. As we read in the book of Psalms, you are clothed with majesty and glory, robed in light as with a cloak. And in another verse, in your light, we see light. St. Paul picks up this imagery in his letter to the Romans when he speaks of Christ being raised by the glory of the Father. The resurrection is the first day of a new creation, a second Genesis, a day in which death becomes not an end in itself, but a Passover, a Passover into the life of God. 
From this light shining out of darkness, from the tomb itself, Christ radiates the glory of God, the light of God, to those whom he encounters after the tomb. Reflect for a moment, my brothers and sisters, upon a scene from the resurrection account in the Gospel of John of Mary Magdalene not recognizing Jesus, supposing he was the gardener. But when he spoke, she recognized him, and he tells her not to cling to him. In essence, she's standing on holy ground, beholding the glory of God, reminiscent of Moses' encounter with the burning bush. Mary is then sent forth to announce the message of liberation to the other disciples. There is also the story from the first Easter afternoon of the two disciples' encounter with the risen Lord Jesus on the road to Emmaus. Their hearts were burning in his presence and their eyes were opened. They saw the light when he broke bread at table with them. In both instances, brothers and sisters, a new light shone forth on the darkness that had enveloped the disciples since Good Friday. Mary would be the apostle to the apostles in carrying forth the new light of the empty tomb. And the two disciples at Emmaus would leave the supper table to rush back to Jerusalem in the evening twilight to bring others the light of Christ. Easter Sunday, then, sisters and brothers, is more than a celebration of the dawning of the new light of resurrection. It is the commissioning of each one of us to light a candle rather than curse the darkness. We might wonder how we can capture this flame so as to spread it to others. Might I suggest we can do it in the breaking open of the sacred scripture and in becoming the bread of life for others, giving them sustenance wherever you and I find ourselves on the road of life these days. In these forms, we can carry the risen Christ to all whom we meet and bring his light into the public square as well as the dark corners. I'd like to leave you with a parable to consider during the next 50 days of the Easter season. It's a story about four men walking through a forest when suddenly they come across a high wall. Intrigued, they build a ladder to see what is on the other side. When the first man climbs to the top, he cries in delight. The same thing happens with both the second and third men. And when the fourth man reaches the top, he smiles at what he sees lush green gardens with fruit trees of every kind, streams teeming with fish and animals wild and tame in abundance. Like the others, he's tempted to jump down and simply to take in just himself the pleasure of that scene. But then he thought of his family, friends and neighbors and went back to share with them the good news he had discovered. Brothers and sisters, accept this Easter candle for us, through us. May it always dispel the darkness of the night. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? And all his works? And all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, that the joy of the risen Lord may inspire young men and women to give their lives in service to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, and experience his saving powers in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer at this time, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own community, unable to gather physically for the celebration of Easter, that we may continue to gather spiritually around the altar and still bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of all who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you. As we now implore through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary to bring an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, full of grace, patroness of this nation and mother of the church, in this time of illness and worldwide need, we seek your intercession for the human family. 
Before your Son's throne of grace and mercy, we ask for strength and adversity, health and weakness, and comfort and sorrow. Help us, O Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the tender compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid like our own Saint Mary Ann Cope, who entrusted her life and ministry among the outcasts of society into the care of our divine physician. Continue to watch over all who are sick, as well as those who care for them, and give wisdom to all who are seeking a cure. We ask this through Christ our Lord. sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the 
Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water in the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and eye, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar, receiving the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you make all these things good, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to our Heavenly Father in the words that our risen Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just want to express a word of gratitude to both the Office of Worship and to the Office of Communications for producing this Easter morning Mass and also to all the ministers who have assisted us today. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Again, thank you everyone. Happy Easter. <laughs>